so far in this chapter we have covered the properties of acids and bases and we have seen in one of the reactions that when acids react with base then they produce salt and water so we can define that salts are those substances which are produced during the reaction of acids and bases and this this kind of reactions are known as neutralization reactions neutralization reactions now there are various family of salts for example if i say sodium sulfate potassium sulfate sodium sulfate potassium sulfate calcium sulfate then i will say sodium nitrate potassium nitrate calcium nitrate okay now we can classify these salts into different families the salts containing the same anions will be uh, kept in one family so we can say family of sulfate salts family of nitrate salts family of chlorides family of phosphates so these are the different families of salts now the salts when dissolved in water salt plus water what happens when the salts are dissolved in water for example if you take nacl and you dissolve it in water then it will produce na plus plus cl minus it actually produces the ions or we rather say that the salts undergo hydrolysis now this nacl is a salt of strong acid and a strong base now when it undergoes hydrolysis then the ph of that resulting solution is equal to 7 which means the ph of the salt solution of nacl is neutral it is a neutral solution because the ph is 7 but there are some other salts which are made up of made up of a strong acid let's say hcl plus a weak base ammonium hydroxide so what are we getting we are getting ammonium chloride plus water now when this ammonium chloride undergoes hydrolysis then the ph of the solution will be below 7 which means the ph becomes below 7 which means the solution is acidic in nature similarly if you take a salt which is produced from a strong base and a weak acid strong base and weak acid then the resulting solution of the salt will be alkaline all right so we can conclude that the salts of strong acid and strong bases the ph is 7 so solutions are neutral strong base and weak acid the ph is above 7 so the solution is alkaline and strong acid and weak base the solution will be acidic because the ph will be below 7 so ph of the salts we have identified now what are the different types of salts there are many different types of salts but the commonly known as salt the commonly known salt is called as common salt which is nothing but nacl which is very widely used in our food items without nacl the food will not have proper taste now the sea water is a major source of nacl sea water contains various other types of salts but the major quantity of nacl is present in sea water now when sea water it dry it dries up then the nacl which is deposited after drying of sea water looks a little brown because of the presence of impurities 
Now this brown color NaCl is known as rock salt. Now this rock salt can be purified and then it can be used for other purposes. Now this NaCl is a very useful salt for preparing, preparing various chemicals. So we say that NaCl is a very useful raw material for preparation of various types of salts. For example, if you take the saturated solution of NaCl saturated solution of NaCl is known as brine solution and when this brine solution undergoes electrolysis it produces sodium hydroxide plus chlorine gas plus hydrogen gas so we can use NaCl for the preparation of sodium hydroxide and the chlorine gas which is produced that is used in the preparation of bleaching powder. What is bleaching powder? Bleaching powder the composition is quite complex but the chemical formula of bleaching powder is CaOCl2. Now when calcium hydroxide reacts with chlorine it produces CaOCl2 plus water. Now this chlorine gas which is generated from the electrolysis of brine solution can be used for uh, preparation of bleaching powder. Now bleaching powder is used for bleaching cotton and linen in the textile industry. It is used for bleaching wood pulp in paper factories and for bleaching washed clothes in laundry. Then it is also used as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries and for disinfecting drinking water to make it free of germs. So it has a very wide use. Similarly, there is another very commonly known salt is baking soda. Baking soda is something which is used in our kitchen to prepare crispy and tasty pakodas and the formula of baking soda is NaHCO3 which is also known as sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Now when NaCl reacts with water, carbon dioxide and ammonia then it produces ammonium chloride plus baking soda NaHCO3. Sometimes this baking soda is added to the food for faster cooking because the substances boil very fast or they, the substances become very soft uh, when so baking soda is added to it. Now this baking soda when, he, when it is heated then it produces sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. NaHCO3 when it is heated then it produces Na2CO3 which is sodium carbonate plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now this is also used for making baking powder which is a mixture of baking soda that is sodium hydrogen carbonate and a mild edible acids such as tartaric acid. When baking powder is heated or mixed in water the following reaction is taking place which is nothing but NaHCO3 in the presence of an acid produces CO2 and water and a sodium salt. Now because of the production of this CO2 the food material or Say for example if it is added to a cake then the cake becomes fluffy because the CO2 gas tries to come out of the mixture in turn it makes the 
uh, it increases the volume of the cake and the cake also becomes soft now it is also used uh, as an ingredient in antacids because it is also alkaline in nature and it neutralizes excess acid in the stomach and provides relief now because co2 gas is also formed when it is heated so it is used in soda acid fire extinguisher because uh, co2 forms a coating over the fire so that it prevents the oxygen to come in contact with fire so that's the reason why this is a major ingredient in the soda acid fire extinguisher apart from this there is another type of salt which is prepared that is washing soda nothing but na2co3 sodium carbonate this is also prepared from sodium chloride uh, and when sodium carbonate reacts with water if you add water to it then it produces na2co3 dot 10 h2o now if you heat now after adding water it absorbs water to form this na2co3 dot 10 h2o which is crystalline in nature now if you heat this sodium carbonate crystal then the water will evaporate to give you back pure sodium carbonate now what is this 10 h2o known as this is known as water of crystallization water of crystallization many salts are there like plaster of paris copper sulfate sodium carbonate when you will see their crystalline structures or crystalline formula then you will see that there is some molecule of there are some molecules of water attached with them like copper sulfate 5h2o sodium carbonate 10h2o plaster of paris is copper sulfate half h2o like this the water molecules are also associated with those salts and uh, these are generally crystalline when they are associated with water and if you heat them the water of crystallization will move out and they will produce pure amorphous salts now let's go through the uses of washing soda washing soda can be used in glass soap and paper industries it is used in the manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax and also it can be used as a cleaning agent for domestic purposes like uh, most of the washing powder they contain washing soda it is also used for removing permanent hardness from water sometimes you will see that how much ever washing powder you add to water it does not form foam so when you add washing soda to it it starts get, starts forming foam and then cleaning of clothes become easier so finally the salts and the water of crystallization types of salts which can be prepared from sodium chloride and the ph of salt solutions these all things we have covered in this session hope all the things are clear to you thank you